Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me about this. This is the last part of my content automation system inside of N8N. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I've kind of walked through all these other pieces of my system, which is kind of inputting a message from Telegram, using RSS feed to get content, using an AI agent to write social media copy. And the last part here uh, is this kind of like posting to your social platform. So how do you take your existing content that you've sort of already curated and post it to uh, any and all of your social media platforms? So this is the last part here. Uh, that I'm going to walk you through today. If you haven't kind of watched any of the other videos that kind of set up the scene for this, including created the database, uh, I highly recommend that. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to a playlist with all my N8N uh, tutorials, and you can kind of poke around there to learn. But today, I really just want to walk you through posting to your social media platform. You can see right now, I really just have this set up to post to X and to LinkedIn. But really, you can see I left space to post to Instagram and Facebook or to your blog if you had it and I'll leave a link in the description for you to download this entire workflow and give you access to the Airtable database. So all you need to do is come up with these dots, go to import from file, go to your downloads, go ahead and click open. And now the entire system is just going to pop in for you. And I will say, if you are unfamiliar with N8N, there are, you know, there is some setup involved. This is essentially out of the box, ready for you to go, but you are going to need to, you know, connect your Airtable credentials. Uh, you're going to need to connect your uh, Twitter and LinkedIn credentials uh, as well. So there is a little bit of setup uh, that's involved, uh, but pretty much this is all be ready to go for you. And you'll just be able to swap in Instagram or Facebook or whatever else uh, you want to put here. My goal always is to really teach you concepts. So you just kind of understand how things work more than give you like specific exact step by step. Here's how to do every little thing because I actually find that that does you a disservice uh, and you end up just kind of like relying on me how to tell you things instead of uh, just figuring stuff out on your own. I honestly believe when it comes to AI automation, uh, being able to problem solve and troubleshoot and learn things on your own is the most important skill. You're going to encounter errors all the time, like things are going to change within the platform. So it's really good to know just kind of how these things work. Uh, which is what I'm here to tell you. And then you can kind of take it from there and kind of like adapt these and change these systems to work in a way that's meaningful uh, and practical for you. So I'm just going to go through this post to social flow, uh, basically inside of NAN. And then I'm just going to kind of show you how everything works uh, from this database inside of Airtable. This is kind of like the hub. I build these systems out for clients. I charge them thousands of dollars for a very similar system to this. Uh, so it's a really valuable system. And I love uh, kind of the way that it's been built. I just kind of want to show it off uh, to you and then kind of teach you how to post all your platforms. So uh, I'm actually going to uh, kind of just walk you through this really quick. Um, then I'm going to kind of show you how it works in the database. Then I'm going to come back to N8N and do kind of a deeper dive into uh, this little automation workflow so you can really understand all the little pieces here. So let's just go ahead and click test workflow. And so now we're going to kind of come in here. We're searching the records. We're looping through. Uh, we're grabbing the image. We're kind of taking this. We're uploading it to Twitter. Uh, and you can see this just posted uh, to our Twitter account. And basically, since the only content here uh, was Twitter, we don't have anything for LinkedIn or anything else. Uh, if we pop in here, we can go to my Twitter page. I'll just click refresh. And now here you can see we just have this Nintendo just leveled up console with the Switch 2 and then the image that uh, we created. And let me tell you, honestly, being able to post this image, I spent hours trying to learn uh, how to post an image to Twitter using the API. Uh, so I'm just going to break that down for you. Uh, in just a minute here. So let's just walk through this really quick. Let me zoom in here. Uh, so this is just set to run uh, on a schedule, right? We have the schedule trigger here. You can set this to run, uh, you know, every day. You can set the thread at midnight, 6 a.m. You can set it to run once a week, however often you want to post to your platforms. That's what you're setting up inside here. So basically all this is doing is first, it's searching uh, the Airtable database, which again, this is this database here. And it, all it's doing is searching for things in this last row that says approved. The status is approved. And so right now, nothing is approved. We haven't approved any content. This is a really important step for clients if they want to curate their own content, if they want to pull in new sources or do research or just write their own content. Like having an approval step is actually extremely valuable to them because they don't want to have control over their voice and their brand and just basically what they're putting out there in the world. So having this approval step is key. Uh, and so what's basically happened in previous steps uh, is basically we have uh, a headline of an article. We have a summary of that article, all created with AI. We have a link to the article. And then basically here, again, this is another step that your clients can choose, uh, you know, what platforms content gets written for. So whether it's Twitter or a blog or LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, uh, and social media content gets written. Um, so here you can see like this is a good example, um, you know, uh, of a row, right? Like you can see here we have uh, the Twitter copy for a Nintendo. And all we said here is that we want to just write a tweet and we want it to create an image, uh, and it kind of just looks like this. And I uh, anticipate adapting this in the next couple of weeks uh, when OpenAI uh, kind of comes out with their 
uh, API for the new image generation model. And so basically, if we're happy with this, we would just set this to approve. Your client can come in here. Uh, they can like, you know, tweak the tweak the Twitter copy if they want to change it, right? If they want to write LinkedIn and Instagram copy, they can do that inside here too. Uh, they can kind of just go ahead and make edits. And so basically all that uh, NADN is doing is looking to see that this content has been approved. So that's what this, uh, you know, Airtable module is doing. And then I had this just set to loop over the item. So it's actually going to go through uh, the search records one at a time for everything that's been approved. I found this is a really uh, kind of the best way to avoid any errors is to just have it loop through one at a time rather than trying to do a whole bunch at once. Uh, and so what's going on here is then this is a switch. Uh, and so basically the switch is kind of looking to see, um, you know, if the channels which are coming through an Airtable, like whether we're basically just looking to see, you know, which social channel the post has been written for. And I'll, I'll show you how to set this up in a minute. Uh, and then here, this part uh, is just kind of like uh, kind of a really complicated step to getting the Twitter image uh, into Twitter if your post has an image. If it doesn't have an image, it's just going to take the copy. It's going to post to Twitter. Uh, this is a much simpler way to get an image for LinkedIn. Uh, I'll break these down for you uh, in a minute. Uh, and then again, if it's a text only post to LinkedIn, it's going to go here. And then at the end, it's basically just going to update the record. Uh, once it's been posted from approved, it's just going to say posted here and it's going to add the date. You can see that here on this top record. And so the other cool thing is I'm just going to show you this uh, hypothetically. You know, let, let me delete this here and let me just go back to approved. And just just for kicks, it, it's kind of irrelevant. I'm just going to copy and paste um, basically the LinkedIn copy here too. So now we can see, even though it's talking about something different, it's kind of irrelevant. And the last thing I need to do here is I actually just need to add in LinkedIn uh, to the social channel so that the NADN automation knows that I also want to post uh, to LinkedIn. And so if I come back in here now and I go ahead and test this workflow, you can basically see what we're going to do is we're going to search the records. It's coming up here. It's basically grabbing the image. It's posting to X. And now you can see here, it's also going to post the image and the post uh, to LinkedIn. And we can come in here and we can see uh, that we basically have updated the status to post it and it gives us the date posted. And so if I come into uh, X or Twitter, basically you can see here that this made this new post again. I'm just going to delete this. I don't need it anymore. But likewise now also, uh, if I come to... Um, if I come to my LinkedIn here and I go to my post activity, you can see now I've also actually posted this to my LinkedIn account. So this is a really powerful way to post to multiple platforms uh, at once. Um, and again, there's space here for you to add Instagram and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so let me just show you essentially how this works. So let me just dive in here and let me break down what each one of these nodes uh, does for you. So basically, we actually got uh, a lot of this already, right? I'm just going to go ahead here and I'm going to reset the status here. And what I'm going to do is let's pop back in here and I'm just going to run this through once again so we can kind of just see the data as I go through it. So basically, I already kind of showed you what happens uh, after you schedule this and run the workflow. But now you can see what's happening uh, in the Airtable database here uh, in the Airtable module. Sorry, is that um, basically it's just grabbing any any item that is approved in your Airtable. And so if we look at this in JSON format uh, or in the schema is maybe a little bit easier of a view. Um, you can basically see it's just pulling in that record, right? So it's getting the source headline, the source summary, the URL. And then here is the Twitter copy and the LinkedIn copy. And one of the other really important things is down here uh, is actually grabbing the URL for the image. And so this isn't like uh, a URL on the internet or something like that. Uh, you can actually store the images directly inside of Airtable uh, in this attachment field. And so what NNN is doing is actually just pulling the URL from Airtable, which is basically the URL of this specific attachment field. Uh, and then, then what we're doing is we're basically just using an HTTP module uh, to kind of grab that image and then post it to our platforms. And so from here, this is going to the switch module. And basically what this is doing, we're basically just looking to see that the social channels, which is here, which is an array that contains social channels zero and one. Right now it's just Twitter and LinkedIn. If you had selected other ones inside of Airtable, uh, remember, we had kind of like selected them here. Uh, this would show the ones that you selected. And so basically, this is just saying that if basically this array uh, contains the word Twitter, output Twitter. If it contains LinkedIn, output LinkedIn. And so it's kind of looking to see what it contains. Uh, and if it contains the thing, it's going to route it to the right uh, kind of to, to the right route, right? And then basically, I have these if nodes. Uh, there's basically an if for uh, Twitter and an if for LinkedIn. And all this is doing is basically it's just looking to see if there's an image, right? And so it's just looking. Remember that field I said this is JSON post image. Uh, this is just this. It's looking to see just if this field exists, period. So if the image exists, it's going to send it to this top route so we can post an image post to Twitter. If there is no image in that field because we didn't want one and we didn't create one, we didn't upload one, whatever, it's just going to go down this false route because there is no image. And it's really just going to post the text 
Uh, and the text is coming from the same place, right? The text is still coming from the Twitter copy field. There just won't be like an image associated with. And the same thing is happening here with LinkedIn, right? The top route here, basically, if there's an image, is getting an image and posting it to LinkedIn. If there isn't an image, it's just posting the text, uh, again, from the LinkedIn field. And so you can see here, again, we have uh, the LinkedIn copy. So it's just going to take the LinkedIn copy and just post the text. So those really the most kind of important things for you to know. Um, this set Twitter uh, moment here is really, really important. You do need like a developer account on Twitter. You need to set up an application. I'm not going to walk through that process today. There's documentation online to do it. Um, I will leave you the code. Uh, so basically here you'll set like your client access key, your client secret, your API. There's like four things that you need to set. Uh, and then there's this bit of code. This is kind of the most important part. I'm going to be honest with you. This part was really confusing and advanced. Um, whatever reason, Twitter API is like really, really difficult to work with. I don't know why. Ask Elon. I don't know. Um, but basically what needs to happen, my understanding of what needs to happen is that there is uh, like a access like token and like a cookie or something like that. I can't remember the names. Um, that basically, yeah, there's a, a consumer, there's a nonce and there's a cookie or something. Like that. I don't know what a nonce is, but basically these things need to be dynamically generated. They don't last for that long. And this is just basically something uh, that Twitter looks at to say like, oh, do you have current approval to post an image? Um, I'm going to shout out to this guy, no code skills, who developed this code to dynamically generate uh, the nonce and the cookie based off of your, you can see it here, the consumer key, the consumer secret, the OAuth token and the secret based off of your access credentials. This dynamically generates those things. I know this is confusing. I literally spent hours. Look, I ended up on French YouTube uh, to find the answer to this. Uh, this dude had the answer. Shout out to no code skills. Seriously. Um, it was free to download from him. Um, and so, you know, I'm just going to put the code uh, along with everything else, just so you have access to it too. But basically this code is just generating whatever those kind of up-to-date access things are. And then we basically just have uh, an HTTP request here. Um, and we're basically just looking to grab the URL um, from uh, this node here, the if the URL exists. Uh, and I'm just kind of grabbing uh, the post image URL here, and I'm just dragging and dropping this field in uh, here. And you can see this is the URL. You can see it's from Airtable, et cetera, et cetera. And again, that comes from the field. And so it's basically just grabbing that image uh, using a simple get request. And then here, this is using a post request uh, to Twitter. And so it's posting, um, you know, your authorization code and the cookie from the code, that previous code from the French dude. Uh, and then it's grabbing the data from here, from the image data itself. And then it's just posting this to Twitter. This is actually a built-in node. If you come into the plus uh, and you type in X, uh, you can see X, formerly Twitter, uh, and they'll have uh, an image post. Uh, this is create tweet here. And so you'll create this tweet. And basically here, what all you're doing is you're grabbing the text. Um, again, I'm just using it from this if node because uh, it's kind of like the latest in the flow. And I'm just piping in the Twitter copy to this field. And then the media ID is actually coming from the previous model. Uh, and it's actually you need this media ID underscore string. Uh, they look the same, but they're interpreted differently uh, via the API. Again, I don't know all the nuance to it, but I'm just dragging this in here. And so it's now it's taking the uh, image URL that we've already uploaded to Twitter and it's posting to Twitter. So that's really the most complex part of this automation. The bottom route, again, this is just using a normal create tweet. And again, this is just grabbing uh, the Twitter copy here and just dragging and dropping this in um, you know, to this field. And again, it's just posting the text. You don't need to do all that fancy stuff uh, in order to get just text to post to Twitter. So that's really how the, the X or Twitter, sorry, I'm going to go back and forth, <laughs> um, works here. Uh, and then it's the same thing with LinkedIn. This is much simpler. This is using the same just kind of like get image HTTP module. If you don't know how to set that up, you just come in here and type HTTP request. And this is literally the most basic form of HTTP request you can use. And again, you're just grabbing the URL uh, from down here in the post image. And it's just basically converting this into binary data. Uh, and then it's going to take uh, a LinkedIn node. Uh, again, you can come up here. You can type in LinkedIn, you can go here and you can do create a post. Uh, this is not like a business post or an article or organization post. This is like just posting to your personal profile. Um, there's a little bit of nuance again in setting this up. Uh, NADN has documentation on how to connect uh, LinkedIn to NADN. Uh, so I've just connected this to my account. And basically this is just pulling in uh, the copy uh, from the module before. So it's just pulling in uh, the LinkedIn copy. Um, and then for the image, uh, it's automatically just going to input the data uh, you just want to type in data here. 
because uh, that's the name uh, of of the data from the HTTP request. Um, again, I know it's a little bit more complex, but this is how the system works. And the bottom is really, it's the same module and there just is no media. I just set media category to none. Uh, and we're just piping in the LinkedIn copy, which is coming from here uh, in the wrapper form. So all this to say, I basically went through and just added a merge node just to merge everything together at the end. So kind of like regardless of whether it comes from Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, like however many, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's basically just coming through here. It takes in that seven number of inputs uh, and it's just updating the record here. Uh, and basically what this is doing, it's searching the ID um, from the search records module, which is all the way at the bottom of the flow. If you scroll all the way back here, um, let see, let me find it here. Search record, we're just piping in the ID here. And then basically, uh, it's just kind of match the record. And the only thing that I'm really doing is I'm updating the status to post it here. And then I'm just doing uh, this little formula. I'll leave this in the description. It's now dot to format and it's year, year, month, month, day, day. And so this way, uh, this is the result. This is what it looks like. Uh, if you just have dot now, it gives us this crazy string, uh, which actually kind of like looks like this. Uh, over here, but if you do this two format and then pipe in uh, lowercase y four times mmdd, you kind of get uh, this reformatted date. And so this is just kind of like for record keeping if we want to organize it by date later. Um, basically, again, like I said, for every record uh, that you've approved uh, in your social hub, right? Like right now, we just had the one. Uh, in this case, it was this, but like say we had approved, you know, this one too and this one too. Like this will just loop through uh, one at a time. Uh, and so the way this works, ideally is that what this is going to do, it's just going to return one item, right? I set this, you can actually turn this off. I just have this return all. But if you want, you just do this to return one. So all it's going to do, it's just going to find the first record uh, that has approved. And so that's why the schedule is really important. Because if you run this every day, it's just going to find the first record that's approved. And it's going to run this through this kind of system. Uh, and it's going to post it for you, right? Uh, the next day, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to find the next record approved. It's only going to return one for you. And it's going to loop through this system over and over again. So that's how this system works. Uh, if you want to watch the video on the entire social hub system, uh, which includes all these other parts, uh, I'll leave a, you know, a link somewhere up here. Uh, I also on my channel have broken down each of these pieces individually if you want to check those out. So if you thought this video was helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.